Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back in the second lecture series of geography. Today we will do the second book that is India Physical Environment Chapter 1. This chapter is very interesting, a very small chapter also. Already you have studied little bit about this chapter in class 9 and 10. But in class 11, our approach will be little bit different. That what are the... Uh, things we will study here, how to analyze locations. Location plays a very important role, we all know. So the name of the chapter is India Location. Okay, India's physical environment, you can open this book, uh, chapter one, okay. So um, uh, first one thing I would like to say that, according to Mark Twain, um, India is the cradle of human race, the birthplace of human speech, the mother of history, the grandmother of legend and the great grandmother of tradition. Our most valuable and most instructive material in the history of man are treasured up in India only. So India is not only a nation, not only a country. Many geographers, many historians and many social scientists used to consider India as a subcontinent. So why India is a subcontinent? What are the factors are there and the location plays a very important role. We will study all these units in this lecture. So let's start. So as a basic introduction, you can see that India is one of the ancient civilization in the world. It has achieved multifaceted social economic progress during the last five decades. It has moved forward, displaying remarkable progress in the field of agriculture, industry, technology, and overall economic development. India has also contributed significantly to the making of world history. When you say about India, when you used to say about India, particularly in geographical terms, location plays a very important role. At the very beginning of the lecture, I have told you that previous lectures also that direction and location directions means north south east west like this and location on the basis of latitude and longitude plays a very important role in geography so in the map in the world map just in right hand side you can see the location of india i have marked with a white circle you can easily see all the other continents you can also see so particularly if i want to say that where is india in which hemisphere then the answer will be india located in northern hemisphere okay the dotted line you can see uh, one minute i'm just highlighting the part yeah the dotted line you can see this is our equator okay and india is here so the location of india is in the northern hemisphere and particularly in northeast okay so in northeast india located if, if anyone asks you that what is the position of india in the world in the globe it will be northeast the mainland of india extend from kashmir in the north to kanyakumari in the south and arunachal pradesh in the east to gujarat in the west india's territorial limit further extend towards uh, the sea up to 12 nautical miles about 21.9 kilometer from the coast so these details we will study step by step in the next lectures in the coming lectures so that's a basic description that i'm giving to you that what is your that why is india located and particularly uh, in which direction india is located so if you see the location uh, in terms of latitude and longitude first is that it lies entirely in the northern hemisphere between 8 degree 4 minute north and 37 degree 6 minute north longitude and 68 degree 7 minute east and 97 degree 25 minute east okay so that is the latitude and longitudinal value of india india is divided by tropic of cancer okay in it divides india into two equal parts that is the northern india and the southern india in in southeast the andaman nicobar islands lie in the uh, these parts bay of bengal and 
Lakshadweep Islands lies in the Arabian Sea. So now we will move forward in detail. We will see the map of India and we will apply this concept in maps. So let's see the map. You can see the map here. So in a vivid way, the latitudinal longitudinal extent is there. This map is very, very important. Okay. So first of all, we have to see this part. Uh, okay. This is the northern hemisphere. This is sorry. This is the northern uh, north and uh, there is south. There is east. This part is east. Okay. And this side is west. So particularly you can see the latitude longitude, the limitations of India's latitude longitude. India is divided into two equal parts by Tropic of Cancer, that is 23 and a half, okay, degree C, a degree. Uh, Tropic of Cancer, it uh, divided India into two halves. And if you measure the western and the eastern limits of India, it is approximately 2933 kilometer, 2933 kilometer. And if you measure the northern and the southern limit of India, it is approximately 3214 kilometer. Hence, the north-south extension of, of India is much bigger than the west east extension of india and this thing we can see from here okay next important part is that the standard meridian standard meridian a line that we every country used to choose a line which divided uh, the nation equally you must say equally so this line is very much important why there, there is a reason because this line used to determine the time okay so the time in this line, for example, will determine the time in the entire India. There is a very debatable concept also that does uh, India needs is only one standard meridian it's okay for India or we need two standard meridian. This is a very debatable concept. We will definitely issue this concept in this chapter and I will make you understand that why geographers and cartographers are asking for two standard meridian uh, for India. Okay. So, the standard meridian of India is approximately 82 degree 30 minute, okay, 82 degree 30 minute east. So, the latitude and longitudinal extent of the mainland is about 30 degree. Always remember the extension, the latitudinal and longitudinal extension of India is approximately 30 degree, okay. India's east-west extent appears to be smaller than the uh, north-south extent that already I have told you. The time along the standard meridian passing through Mirzapur in Uttar Pradesh is taken as the Indian, Indian standard time for the whole country. So this line is the IST Indian standard time which passes through Mirzapur, Uttar Pradesh. Okay. And the most important contradiction is that the time gap. For example, as the mainland of India is 30 degree, the extent of the mainland of India is 30 degree, there is always an issue of time. For example, the sunrise and sunset will be different. Those who are living in Gujarat, suppose here, this part, and those who are living in Arunachal Pradesh, here. So the event of sunrise and sunset will be different for them. But hence, we are only taking one standard meridian so arunachal pradesh people also have to set their clock in the same time as well as gujarat people also have to set their clock in the same time which is very much a, it is very much difficult okay geographically which is known as incorrect so the difference between the time difference between gujarat and arunachal pradesh is approximately 2 hours approximately 2 hours and that creates a lot of problem what can be a problem for example uh, a general time to open an office is approximately 10 am but in Gujarat the value of 10 am will be different and in Arunachal Pradesh the value of 10 am will be different but as we are holding IST as only one time zone we have to consider it like that it is a very difficult issue nowadays and people particularly geographers and cartographers are thinking about it that we should need 
different uh, at least two standard meridian for our country i hope this part is approximately clear to you please have a look in the map uh, and just check the lat long uh, of uh, india uh, and and if you have any confusion any any problem please let me know in google classroom okay so next part we will go uh, that is uh, yes the geographical location and facts this is the next important part uh, the geographical location and facts one important uh, thing i like to share with you that as india having one time zone that is ist there is a nation which have approximately 11 time zones do you know which country is this the country is russia russia having 11 time zone because the reason is that the area of russia is huge the area of russia is huge that's why they having 11 time zones what are the name of the time zones this time zone of russia is known as moscow standard time moscow standard time and there are 11 time zones particularly someone uh, some it, it, it is in the vladivostok uh, another is in the uh, magadan after that uh, uh, yakutsu uh, so uh, so these are the important sanara okay eastern uh, european standard and there are a lot of standard times are there in russia so russia having 11 time zones so a question may come in examination so india is a country of great geographical extent okay india is a country of great geographical extent it sprawls from the snow ranges of the himalayas in the north himalayas in the north and to the shores of the indian ocean in the south it belongs to asia which is the largest continent of the world it forms a part of south asia and is separated by himalayas from the rest of continent it encompasses vast areas of diverse land masses in the north are the lofty himalayas part of which are permanently ice covered to the south of the himalayas is the great indo-gangetic plain which is well known for its fertile soil the western part of this vast plain is thar desert south of this plain is the peninsular india comprising uneven plateau which is surrounded by eastern coastal plain in the east and western coastal plain in the west indian landmass gets an abundance of sunshine from the tropical sun and splashing rains from the monsoon these are two important climatic factors for indian people due to its vastness and diversity india is considered to be a subcontinent as it comprises all the characteristics of a continent so one side mountain one side plateau one side coastal area one side desert one side fertile land tropical evergreen forest surrounded by oceans arabian sea bay of bengal this vastness due to this vastness and diversity india is considered to be a subcontinent not only physical diversity due to our cultural diversity religious diversity a lot of religion we used to follow in india lot of festival lot of uh, culture okay food habits different things that's why india is considered to be a subcontinent moving on to the next part so the question that i uh, just um, raised to you that need of two time zones and why it is important this is my question that i uh, asked you at that time that why we need two separate time zones okay so let's understand this concept first it's a very easy concept this concept we will utilize in our chapter 4 of practical geography so make it very clear india extends from 8 degree and 4 minute north to 37 degree 6 minute north latitude okay and 68 degree 7 minute east to 97 degree 25 minute east longitude we have already done this thus the latitude longitude extent is 30 degree okay away from the mainland of india the southernmost point in in the andaman nicobar island the indira point okay the southernmost point of india 
is the Indira point. Okay, it's located in uh, six degree forty five minute north latitude. Its north south extent from Indira Kol in Kashmir to Kanyakumari is three thousand two hundred fourteen kilometer, and uh, while its east west width from run of Kutch to Arunachal Pradesh is two thousand nine hundred. Thirty-three kilometer that we have already seen in our India map. Okay, the map of India. So let's once again we have to see this map. Okay, so Indira Coal will be where? Indira Coal it will be here. Okay, and the southernmost point, uh, it is not here approximately. It will be here. Okay, this part that is the Indira point, six degree. 45 minute. Okay, these are the two ends of India. Question may come. What is the north? Northern end of India, Indira Coal, I N D I R A C O L, Indira Coal, and the southern uh, extreme point is the uh, Indira point. Okay, and this is the map. Now let's study the important part. The latitudinal extent of India is about one third of the angular distance between the equator and the North Pole, and its longitudinal extent is about one twelfth of circumference of the equator. i am not going to in detail in this part we will understand this part in chapter 4 of latitude and longitude but for the basic understanding uh, one thing i would like to share that latitude and longitude these lines are the angular distance these lines are the angular distance why angular distance see latitudes longitudes are uh, meridians for example longitudes are straight line okay these lines like this latitudes are like this so angular distance means what it creating a angle here okay like this so to find out location angular distance plays a very important role okay the longitudinal difference between saurashtra in the west saurashtra is in gujarat and arunachal pradesh in the east is about 30 degree their difference is 30 degree the earth moves around its axis through 360 degree in 24 hours thus a difference of 1 degree Will make a difference of four minute. In simple language, always remember one degree equals to four minute. Okay, one degree equals to four minute. Therefore, the difference between Shaurashtra and Arunachal Pradesh. If you see Shaurashtra and Arunachal Pradesh, if you see the difference, so one degree equals to four minute. And in Shaurashtra, that is in Gujarat, you can see sixty eight degree seven minute, and Arunachal Pradesh ninety seven degree thirty twenty five minute. So, if you calculate the difference, what can be? The difference stands for two hours approximately, okay? Because the difference between Shaurashtra, uh, that is in Gujarat, and Arunachal Pradesh is approximately thirty degree, and one degree equals to four minute. So thirteen to four equals to one twenty minute, or two hours, okay? Or two hours. That is the difference. But we having only one standard meridian, that is the IST, Indian Standard Time. that is a problem okay that is a problem so since arunachal pradesh is towards east it will have sunrise about 2 hours before the sunrise at shaurashtra suppose sun rising in arunachal pradesh at 5 am and in gujarat it will sunrise will 7 am the timing will be like that okay thus the sun is quite high in the sky in arunachal pradesh while shaurashtra still wait for the first ray of the sun this is a major geographical issue that india is facing my question to you is that does we need a separate standard meridian or two ist indian standard time as russia having 11 standard time does india need two standard time if so what is your suggestion that from which part of india should we plot the standard meridian 1 and standard meridian 2 this is my question try to attempt the answer so that's a basic uh, description about what you have under, understood about the concept of india the vastness of india why india is called subcontinent the diversity of india the location of india and lastly the problem of standard meridian the problem of standard meridian is a very emerging issue and a very recent uh, it, it is in a very recent trend so please understand it carefully and this type of question usually comes in the examination
what is the basic difference they will ask you so just do the small calculation that i have shown you right now okay so maps and diagram i have tried to plot it out that many a times a question used to come name the places through which the tropic of cancer pa passes through india okay name the places from which the tropic of cancer passes in india for example gujarat madhya pradesh jharkhand west bengal and some parts of uh, yes gujarat madhya pradesh jharkhand and west bengal these are the important places okay the standard meridian you can see here okay and the present day map of india the states and union territories of india so this is west bengal and all the divisions are here uh this is this part is arabian sea this part is bay of bengal okay here is the pak strait joining sri lanka india a narrow strait this is our neighbors pakistan china and all so we are in the last portion of this lecture that is the my question is to you that please try this answer in your home it's a homework that what is latitude and longitude why this imaginary lines are important does india need two separate time zone if yes justify seven marks question uh, is there to try to attempt this answer it's very easy no issues uh, i will sep i will uh, make a link in the google classroom where you can submit your answer script okay so that's all about the chapter i hope you understood the chapter the maps are very much important so please have a look i will provide the study materials to you uh so from there you can study all the things so that's all about the part 1 of this lecture part 1 of this lecture uh we will do the part 2 in the upcoming session upcoming series okay thank you everyone take care